Hi there, I'm Emily on Sailing Vessel Temptress, and today we're going to talk about using a VHF marine radio aboard your boat. When you're out on a boat, whether it's for a day trip or as a lifestyle, you can't always count on internet or phone to be available if you need to contact somebody in an emergency or simply for a social situation. So that's what the VHF radio is for. Uh, everybody aboard your boat should know how to confidently and correctly use a VHF radio, so it's important uh, whether it's your partner or your crew or a guest you have aboard or even your kids, it's good for everybody to know how to use this piece of equipment right here. And it's not super complicated, I'm going to walk you through it. My husband Clark and I have been sailing together for over five years now and uh, the VHF radio is something that I have usually been in charge of, especially when we're underway or navigating or there's night crossing or whatever, I'm usually the one that hops down here and uh, gets on the radio. The nice thing now is that we've just installed another radio handset up in the cockpit so now we can both use the radio at the same time. Um, I've also been the VHF uh, net controller pretty consistently in Georgetown in the Bahamas when we stay there for a good what, three, four seasons now? So I have a lot of time on the mic, I guess you would say. Uh, I'm not perfect, but uh, I've picked up a few things over the last few years, and I'm going to share them with you today. So what is the VHF radio? The VHF radio is a way to communicate. It's good for about 25 miles. There's something called a single sideband radio, which we also have, which is good for much longer distances. But this is going to be your... Uh, short-term or short-distance communication when you're on the boat. Uh, it's good for emergencies, it's good for getting weather information and sort of general updates about the surrounding area, it's good for chatting with friends, uh, it's good for if you are sailing or going somewhere and you see another boat coming and you want to establish communication and figure out, you know, are we gonna cross each other's paths, what is, what's going on? Um, so it's got a lot of good uses and it's also kind of a social platform. You could call it the social network uh, for cruisers out here. Um, we do nets sometimes, which is sort of like a morning conference call, I guess you would call it, between boats to check in on people. Do people need, you know, does somebody need a tool they don't have or is somebody having trouble with their dinghy or um, lots of those sorts of things. Or just, hey, do people want to get together and have a potluck this weekend? Um, all those things are ways that we use the VHF radio. So who needs a VHF radio? Well, basically, if you are on a boat and you are farther from shore than you would need to be for someone to hear you scream or blow your horn, you probably need to have a radio. Now, if you are in like a little dinghy, like I am sometimes, a handheld radio is probably just fine for you. Um, you don't have to get super far. If you um, are doing more than just day sailing, if you have any size, substantial boat, it's probably going to come with a VHF radio installed in it. And there's a good reason for that. You should have one. Uh, it is emergency equipment. It's as important as having an anchor or uh, life jackets. Um, it's a way to communicate when you're in trouble and to get the word out. Um, so if you are going out for a day sail, get a handheld. If you've got a little boat, have a decent radio that you can make some communication with. If you're going to go out long term, and like us, maybe you're going to spend a month in the Ragged Islands or something like that where there's not many other people, uh, you might want to have something more substantial and long range with a bigger antenna, um, those sorts of things. But uh, again, day sailor, coaster cruiser, voyager, all these people are going to need a VHF radio, and all these people should know how to use the VHF radio. All right, so let's take a look at the basic parts and functions of the radio, VHF 101, if you will. Uh, here on our radio uh, is a power button right here. We also turn it on at the panel over here. We've got up and down buttons to control the channel. We'll get into channels a little bit later. Uh, there's a volume here, obviously controls the volume. Uh, this is something called the squelch. A VHF radio is all the time going to sound like this. <laughs> The squelch is a function inside the radio that tells the speaker to ignore that noise when there's nothing else going on. But when somebody else is talking and it comes through, it projects that. So um, we always want to put the squelch down as far as you can until it just starts making that noise and then pop it up again. It's almost like uh, being in the shower, right? You turn the hot all the way on and then you dial it back until it's just right. Um, so that looks like this. <laughs> 
just one click up from there, usually. Now, sometimes if you're making a long distance connection and somebody, you're getting like every other word that they're saying, sometimes I'll turn the squelch down and I'll hear that static, but I'll also be able to hear the words that they're saying through the static, So, which is, can be tough, but you get used to doing it after a while. So anyway, that is the squelch button. Uh, we have here a red button that says 16 on it. The reason it says 16 on it is that 16 is the general hailing and emergency channel. So it's a quick way to jump right to channel 16. And if you press it again, it'll go back to the channel that you were on before. Uh, let's see, the HL button, that's for high power and low power. If your radio is on low power, you're going to be able to communicate at a short distance. If it's at high power, you're going to be communicating at a longer distance. So if you're trying to get through to somebody and they can't hear you, you can turn on the high power. If you're in a small bay like we are here in Luperon and everybody's really close together, low power is fine and people can usually hear us. If we're out a longer distance, obviously we want to get out. We don't want to have it on high power all the time when we're here in the bay and we don't need to reach someone far away because Everybody out there can hear what we're saying, and they don't need to hear what we're saying. So um, most people's VHF is in a central place in their boat, so it's kind of like screaming into everybody's living room, and you don't want to scream into everybody's literary living room everywhere around you, only just the people that you need to reach, essentially. Uh, over here, we have a distress button. It's, con it's got a little cover on ours. You press the distress button, and it will transmit your GPS location out uh, if you're in distress. So that's what that's for. Uh, up here is a handy little light on our radio. When something is coming through on the radio, that will light up to show that there's sound coming out. That can actually be really handy because sometimes if you're on a phone or something, you'll turn the volume down or if somebody's having a really obnoxious conversation at three in the morning, they'll just get up and turn it down. And sometimes you forget it's down. Um, so you'll look over and, oh, why is it bleeding? Oh, somebody's talking and my volume's turned down. Happens all the time, actually. You'll hear somebody call for another boat and then that boat will call them back and they won't respond because they've turned their radio down and forgotten to turn it back up. Anyway, uh, those are the general parts of the radio. Let's talk a little bit about the microphone. Our microphone is a little bit uh, advanced, I guess you would say. This is the push to talk button. Most radios will have that. Uh, we've got a high low button control here. Same thing, it controls the uh, high power, low power. We've got that jump to channel 16 and back button, and then we've got our up and down buttons, uh, which are handy too. Um, there are high gain mics and there are low gain mics. Let's talk about the differences. Our previous radio had a low gain mic. This radio has a high gain mic and they work very differently. Um, a high gain mic is going to take in all the sound around it and it's gonna be nice and loud. A low gain mic is only gonna take in the sounds that are very close to the microphone. Why would you want one versus the other? Well, when we are underway and this engine is roaring and maybe there's a storm going on, if we have to communicate to somebody and I push this button, they're gonna get a lot of noise. They're gonna hear, hear any music that's on, they're gonna hear any background noise, they're gonna hear the conversation that's happening over there in the boat, they're gonna hear everything. Um, now that means it's easy to talk you know, comfortably from here, but sometimes you don't want that. Sometimes it's better to have a low gain microphone. Um, our old one is a low grain and you had to hold it very close to your mouth in order to be heard. This one we can kind of use it straight out here. How do you use the microphone? Um, so again, know whether you have a high gain or a low gain microphone because if you talk like this into a high gain microphone, you're gonna be screaming at everybody. And if you talk like this in a low gain microphone, nobody's going to be able to hear you. When you use a microphone, um, you should over enunciate your words to almost an obnoxious degree because what comes out on the other end of somebody's radio and depending on what kind of radio or quality equipment they have, it's going to be, you know, like a, a difficult phone call to hear. So it's being as clear as possible helps. Um, holding your microphone, especially if you've got a low mic and you're holding it right here, if you can avoid those plosives, those P's and those T's and those S's, there are some people who do that and it's just like, oh, listening to them talk is really difficult. Uh, you can turn your mic sideways. So I think you'll see, uh, we did some videos of me doing the cruiser's net. You can check out those up here. Um, and I believe I was using a low gain mic at the time. So I was holding it just like this. Uh, and that's how I usually use a low gain microphone. This one I hold out here a little bit, uh, here. So anyway, high gain, low gain micro microphone, know which one you have and know how to use it. If you don't know whether you have a high gain or a low gain microphone, you can call a friend on another boat and do a radio test. Do it on a working channel, which again, we'll get into channels later. Um, you could just say, you know, 
here's test number A, here's test B, here's test C, which one sounds the best, and you can figure out where that distance is for you. Another thing about the microphone is this push to talk button. They, there's different sensitivities, and sometimes uh, that button is kind of laborious to push down and hold down. Um, if you are having troubles that people are getting every other word because you're accidentally lifting off that button or not pressing it hard enough, one of the tests you can do, uh, let me just go to another channel here quickly, is you can turn on your squelch and you can push to talk and if, you, if, if, your, but and if your button slips up, you're going to get that obnoxious um, static noise so you know your finger will have moved off the button. Um, so it's a good way to practice. Um, yeah, that's it. So make sure your button is all the way down. I guess the last thing about microphone is when you're talking, push down the button, wait half a second, then say your message, wait half a second, then lift off the button. There's a lot of people who just go, oh, hello, and you hear, blah, and you don't hear the, the first part of their word, or they cut themselves off. Um, so push, talk, let it, you know, finish talking, then let go. So I think that's all I'm going to say about the microphone. Okay, so we've talked about the basics of the radio itself. Let's talk about channels. Um, there are some very important channels that you should know when it comes to the VHF radio. Channel 16, everywhere around the world, everywhere, is the hailing and emergency channel in general. Um, if you are going through a big place like Miami, you're going to hear a lot of traffic on channel 16. It's when you are out sailing and another boat is out sailing and you want to get hold of them, the basic thing to do is to always be on channel 16 so you can contact that boat. That's just where everybody is. Um, now, because that's where everybody is, it is very loud and it is very busy. Um, so in a harbor like this in Luperon, there is generally a locally accepted hailing channel. Here it's 68. It's also 68 in Georgetown when we spend time there. That's what people in a small area use to hail other boats and get their attention. It's where people hang out, I guess you could say. If you were to call somebody on the emergency, the, on 16, you know, the hailing channel or one of these sort of smaller hailing channels, the courteous thing to do is to get off of that channel and move to what is called a working channel. So sometimes it's just, hey, up one or go to 69 or go to 72, whatever the number is, you establish what the channel is, then you both go there and you continue your conversation. Even if you're in a place and there's nobody else on that hailing channel, that doesn't mean there isn't other traffic going around. We have a very high-powered antenna, we have a very high-powered radio, and if we're talking to somebody in this bay, chances are people are going to be hearing us way out. So there, I, we could be interrupting conversations way out there and not know it. So it's good to do what you need to do and then get off to a working channel that you know is less busy. So uh, I guess you can think about it. emergency hailing channel, you know, sub-hailing channels, and then you have working channels. Okay, now that we know the basics, let's talk about making a call on the radio. Uh, you've got your hailing channel, okay? You have another boat out there that you want to contact. Sometimes you might not know the name of that boat. You might just say, hey, catamaran heading east from, you know, Guacamole Island, whatever it is, uh, and they may respond to you. Uh, but sometimes you know their name. So let's say we're calling a boat called Princess. We're temperatures, we're going to call a boat called Princess. Uh, you're going to make sure you're on the correct hailing channel, which I'm not because I don't want to accidentally transmit, and you're going to push down your button and you're going to say that other boat's name three times, then your own boat name three times. So I would say Princess, 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 Temptress, Temptress, Temptress. And that would be the signal that says, here's who I want to talk to and here's who I am. Uh, then I'm going to wait. <laughs> if they don't respond right away, don't keep hammering on it. Um, give them a second, you know, maybe they're eating dinner or whatever they need to do. When they hear you, if they hear you, they're going to respond back and they say, Hey, Temptress, Temptress, this is Princess. And you say, Hey, Princess, how's it going? Let's move to working channel such and such. And they, they would switch to the other channel. So you can continue your conversation there. A uh, good thing to know is that the VHF radio uses a half duplex system, not a full duplex system. What does that mean? Well, it's not like a cell phone. You can't just get on and talk to somebody and they can talk over you and interrupt you while you're talking. You press, you talk, and you talk and talk and talk until you're done talking, and then you lift off the button and it's their turn to talk. Um, so you can't really break into a conversation if somebody's hand is down on the button. So your messages should be short and you should indicate to the other person when you're done talking. And we do that by saying over, as in over to you. So, hey, how's it going? We're just hanging out here today, wondering if you guys want to go out for lunch, over. You know, to which they'll reply, hey, that sounds good. What time were you thinking? Over. 
and you know then it's your turn to talk. Um, the Hollywood stereotype we think of is over and out. Over and out means over to you and I'm done talking to you because the word out means I'm done with the conversation. So don't ever say over and out, use one or the other. Over means over to you, we're still talking. Out means goodbye, essentially. Other lingo you might need is the word break. If somebody else is having a conversation or two people are confused or maybe not hearing uh, each other, you can break into the conversation just by saying the word break or break break. Uh, and then when they hear that, they'll stop and they'll say, oh, break, go ahead, come into our conversation. The other thing that might come in handy is relaying. So if you hear a boat calling another boat and the other boat is responding, but the other boat can't seem to hear the boat that is calling them, you can call one of those other boats and say, hey, princess, uh, Mr. Rogers is calling you, but you don't seem to be hearing him. I'd be happy to relay for you, which they'll say, oh, okay, great. And I would say, okay, Mr. Rogers, princess is listening. What do you want to say to them? Over. And then they would give me the message and I would pass it on. Sometimes, uh, depending on the, your, your antenna height and all kinds of other things about your radio, you may be in a position to hear two people that can't hear each other. So we all help each other out. So, um, so uh, over, out, uh, relaying, and breaking. Those are some important terms for you. The other, something else that would be good for you to know, and it's, there's no shame in putting a little cheat sheet up by your radio, is the phonetic alphabet, being able to spell things. Um, again, it can be pretty garbly when you transmit, so knowing the phonetic alphabet, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo, Foxtrot, Golf, Hotel, etc., etc., uh, allows us to have a common language and know what you're saying when you're spelling things. Uh, time this happens a lot is when you're going through bridges, uh, the drawbridges in the ICW, You'll often call the bridge operator and ask for the next opening so that you can get your boat through. And they will ask you, what is your name? And you will have to spell their name. Temptress is one that they say, what is it? What are you, you know, are you saying temperatures? Are you saying tempest? They don't know. So we usually have to spell it out for them. Uh, and again, you can write it right near your radio if you want. Here's how we say the phonetic spelling of our boat name. Let's take a look at what a conversation might sound like on the VHF radio. Let's cut to a clip of me talking to my good friend, Conrad. Talahala, talahala, talahala. This is Temptress. Temptress, talahala. Hi, talahala. Uh, let's go up to 7-4, please. Over. 7-4. Okay, so we're going to switch channels to get off that hailing channel, and then we're going to establish communication here. Talahala, this is Temptress. It's good to make sure they're there before you start talking. Talahala, this is Temptress. Temptress, Talahala. Hey, Conrad, how are you doing today? Over. Very well, Emily, and you? Over. I'm doing just fine. I'm shooting a YouTube video here and want to explain some of the terms that we're using, so uh, I'm going to tell you a knock-knock joke. Over. Sounds great. Over. Knock-knock. Over. Who's there? Over. Dishes. Dishes who? Dishes a nice conversation we're having over our VHF radio, don't you think? Over. Hey, yeah, sure is. Over. <laughs> uh, that's all I got for you. Uh, anything else going on? Over. You know, just doing boat projects. Um, but uh, just a, a regular day in Lip Run. Over. Just a regular day. Okay, well, enjoy the rest of your day, and I will go back to 6-8. Temptress, out. Back to 6-8. Tlaha, out. All right, let's talk about maybe the most important part, which is emergencies. How do you handle emergencies? There are three key words that everybody aboard your boat should know when it comes to emergencies. There are three different levels of urgency. Um, of emergency. You can kind of think of them, I think of them as sort of red, orange, and yellow emergencies. The red, the highest, the most serious emergency, we all know from Hollywood, it's mayday, mayday, mayday. This is temptress, you know, we just accidentally jibe and my captain has fallen overboard and I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Somebody please come help me. Um, whatever that might be. Mayday is for when your boat is sinking, when somebody is seriously hurt or injured, there's medical need, and you need someone to come and help you. Everybody stop what you're doing and pay attention to what I'm saying. It's very important. Mayday, mayday, mayday. That is what mayday is for. 
The second level is called Pan Pan. This is what I think of as sort of the orange level of emergency. Pan Pan is for something that might be serious or something that is imminent or something to watch out for. You could think of it as if you have a tornado warning or tornado watch. Pan Pan would be the tornado watch, or I guess hurricane watch. If we're talking about boats, I guess that's more appropriate. Um, so Pan Pan, uh, if you're on a collision course with another boat, that might be a good example of the use Pan Pan. So we got Mayday, we got Pan Pan. The last one, it's sort of the yellow or maybe even sort of the greenish yellow color of emergency would be Securite. Securite is something that's used a lot. If you're going through Miami or another big city, you'll often hear the Coast Guard, you know, Securite, 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 this is the Coast Guard station, something, something, something. Here's the weather going on right now and we've gotten a call about something. You should be on the lookout for some boat that is doing something. Uh, it's a general announcement, a general broadcast, something that doesn't demand everybody stop it, what they're doing right now and listen. Nobody's going to die if you ignore these announcements. Um, these are for things like weather, um, those sorts of advisories, I guess you could say, or other types of news. So again, Mayday, Pan Pan, Securite. Know what those are, and again, you can paste them right by your radio. Um, in fact, uh, if you are on our Patreon page, we're going to put up a PDF that you can just print off and put right near your VHF radio that will have a little script about how to handle emergencies, which emergency word to use, your phonetic alphabet, insert how you spell your name here. It's a good key if you just got a boat, um, and if you're in a special situation, especially, sometimes you know this stuff, you know your phonetic alphabet off the top of your head, and then you get in a stressful situation, you can't think of what is the, what is, what do you use for M? I forgot, I forgot, what is it? And, you know, do you just have it there? And it's also good for kids. Speaking of kids, and speaking of crew members, uh, if you have kids aboard your boat, or guests aboard your boat, but mostly kids, um, teach them how to use and respect the VHF radio. If you don't, it's sort of like, you know, kids have fun and they dial 911 because they heard there's this thing called 911 and they don't really know how it works. If you teach them how to use it and respect it, they will respect it. Uh, we hear this a lot of times in Georgetown. Some little kid will get on the radio and start singing or say, is anybody out there? You know, they want to hear somebody talk back. They see their parents or the adults aboard using this thing to talk. They know what it is, so they want to experiment with it. Um, the smartest parents are the ones who teach them how to use that radio, and you hear these kids calling, you know, hey, boat, 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 this is me, you know, and they'll call, and they'll go to a working channel, and they'll say, do you guys want to come over and have a slumber party tonight? And they'll say, okay. Um, which is really cute, but it's important because those kids, if something happens to their parents, are going to be able to get on that radio, know how it works, and call for help if an adult can't. So make sure that your kids know how to use the VHF radio. You can practice, pick a working channel that is not a handling channel, and you can practice back and forth with a handheld uh, and your VHF radio if you can. I think that's about it for the basics of VHF radio operation on a boat. Again, know how to use your radio. Get a radio, first of all. You need a radio. It's an emergency equipment. Test your radio. Make sure it works. Uh, if you have questions in particular about how to install it or troubleshoot your radio, feel free to leave some comments below or hit us up on Patreon. We're happy to message back and forth and help people figure this stuff out. Get yourself a radio. Get yourself a radio that works. Know how to use your radio. Know how to um, call for emergencies. Know what channels to use teach everybody who's on your boat even if they're on for a day trip teach them how to use the radio because they might need it in an emergency and you can't count on a cell phone call to 911 if you needed it because sometimes you're out too far to reach somebody um, this is really an important thing to know if you're gonna go out in your boat as important as knowing how to anchor as important as uh, knowing how to start your engine 
Uh, it's just a basic part of boat operation. So um, again, feel free to leave comments if you have questions, if you have other tips for other folks about what you've learned about the VHF radio and tips that you'd like to share. And thank you all, to all of our patrons for uh, making this video possible, all of our ongoing videos possible. Thank you to those who caught our live stream last month because that's where this video idea came from. Somebody was actually asking about the VHF radio nets. Uh, you can check out the VHF radio nets uh, I've done up here, up here. I film myself in mirror image, so I don't know which way it is. But uh, I've done VHF radio nets before. There's a couple different uh, videos out there with me doing a radio net, so we'll link those in the description. Here in Lupron, we don't do it so much because it's just not so much a floating community as it is in a place like Georgetown. Um, but we might do another video about how to maybe start a radio net or how I plan a radio net. Um, yeah, so there you have it. Those are the basics. Learn how to use your radio and uh, we'll talk to you next time.